Zell as a institute provides training for ACCA, CFA, CPA, which is basically encompassing finance, accounts, and analytics. And this is going to help you guys also understand more about companies' balance sheets, audit, auditing, financial management, portfolio management. If you guys are interested to know more about these programs, you can again drop your number or reach out to us on our website. If there's any other question or any other topic you'd like us to cover, please drop it in the comment section below. Like and subscribe to our channel so that anytime a post goes up, you guys get the notification and you guys can, you know, hopefully get some gain out of this. Hi guys, this is Anantya. I'm back with shooting a video on value investing. The value investing is a term which is thrown across to pick stocks which are undervalued. Now, I'm going to explain this very simply with, with the help of an example. If you remember the old 5 rupee coin which we had, which is slightly a little bit more thicker than the one we used today, that old 5 rupee coin was worth more than the purchasing power of that coin. What was happening was that that 5 rupee coin was being smuggled to countries like Bangladesh, who was, which were melting the metal and it was yielding a total gross metal value of over 12 rupees. They were making that into razor blades and they were selling it across the world. What that meant was that the 5 rupee coin in a pocket was worth way, way, way more, 100% more, more than the actual worth of the 5 rupee coin. Again, it's a currency, so we can't, you know, melt it in India. But that 5 rupee coin had metal worth more than 5 rupees. So what that means is we look for bargain deals or rather we look for deals which yield us immediately way more value than what they are being sold in the market for. The father of value investing, according to Warren Buffett, is Benjamin Graham. He's written this book called The Intelligent Investor. This is a brilliant book which covers value investing. I would not recommend that you start reading, uh, if you're a first-time investor, I wouldn't recommend that you start reading this book. You build up your knowledge before you get into value investing. But it covers seven principles which I'm going to cover today. I'm going to use or try to use as many examples as I can to explain to you how to use value investing in your day-to-day -day life. So the first strategy which Ben Graham highlights in his book is quality ranking. Now, quality ranking basically means a ranking given by agencies, independent agencies across the world. Globally, there are three very famous uh, credit rating agencies, Standard & Poor's, S&P, uh, Fitch, Moody's. Uh, in India, we have our own credit rating agency, which is called Crystal. The, according to Ben Graham, an independent agency, when they are high, when they are uh, doing the due diligence on any particular company on a, or on any particular financial instrument, they'll give you a rating which ranges anywhere from B to A. Uh, anything above a B plus, which is an average, is considered a quality ranking. Personally, I'm not a very big fan of credit rating agencies after what I've read, which happened in the 2008 crisis. Uh, where credit rating agencies had apparently given a better rating to collateral CDOs, which led to the debacle which happened in 2008. The after effects of that particular debacle are still continuing to this date. So again, you can refer to Ben Graham's strategy number one, which is called quality ranking. Strategy number two is financial leverage. Ben Graham says that it's very important to pick stocks with a very strong financial condition. How you can calculate financial leverage by a simple formula, the total debt upon the total assets of the company. Ben Graham also highlights for industrial companies only, for industrial companies only, total debt should not be more than 110% of its net current assets. Now, what, what, what do you mean by financial leverage in a very simple sense is how easily can a company pay back its debt and how much liquid liquidity does it own? The lesser the debt, the better it is for a company. Uh, an example of an Indian company having a great uh, balance sheet is Colgate. It has zero debt. It's used across the country almost on an everyday basis. You can check the financial. This is not uh, this is not an advice I'm giving you to pick stock, but I'm just explaining to you in financial leverage terms. It's a, it has a strong balance sheet with an ever-changing environment. If it keeps adapting, it'll do brilliantly uh, for the years to come. So, strategy number two. Very simply, is called financial level. Ben Graham's strategy number three highlights the company's liquidity. A company should hold enough liquidity in case there's a favorable or an unfavorable uh, external environment caused, which causes it to have liquidity to either buy stock for cheaper prices, its own uh, raw materials for cheaper prices, or just in case of an unprecedented situation which comes across like something like COVID, which we faced in the last one and a half years, 
to hold enough cash on its books or rather have the ability to be able to generate its assets for cash. Current ratio is current liabilities is to current assets. According to Ben Graham, the total current assets should be more, should be at least 1.5 times than its current liabilities. This means that if it pays off its creditors, if it pays off all the people it owes money, by selling all its stock, it should at least have 50% more liquidity. This would hold, this will help the company in situations where there is a, a, you know, a, a need for cash and it can you know, act quickly when it wants to and doesn't have to go to lenders or equity holders to generate that kind of cash. This would help the management of the company make quick decisions, faster decisions when external environment is favorable or unfavorable. Okay, so I'm gonna give you an example and explain to you what value investing stocks mean or high growth stocks would entail. Uh, this is the year between 2015 and 2016 where I was trying to invest in the markets. Um, I wanted to invest in a consumer goods sector where, uh, where consumers would use this at a B2B setup. I was able to understand that wires, electrical wiring, switches, etc., is used in almost every single house, office, you know, it's used across the, across the country. And I wanted to invest in a company which, would, which was tipped to, you know, dominate this market. Uh, I went to the electrical market and I asked a few dealers about some of the companies or some of the brands which they sell. Some of these companies which they sold was Polycab, they sold Havels, they sold Roma, Anchor. But most of the dealers kept recommending Havels. Uh, you know, there were various different reasons which they gave. And uh, I picked up the stock anywhere between 250 to 270 bucks. And I think this year it hit an all-time high of 1200 bucks, which made my money multiply four times. What, why that happened was I went on the ground, I looked at the company's financials, but more importantly, the people who were selling the stock were able to tell me, or uh, the, the people who were selling the raw material, the end finished goods of Havels, or of Polycap, or of Anchor, were enthralled by the fact the company had their best practices, it had a strong distribution network across the country, and, they were, and people who were selling it were actually happy to sell the product. And that gave me a boost of confidence, which enabled my small investment into Havels, which today, you know, has average, I have a handsome Forex return. So again, do your research by going down to the market, by go to, speaking to local sellers, people who are buying it, and seeing the quality of the product at the end of the day, which also matters. This is not a principle covered by Ben Graham, but quality matters. Look at Apple and the top companies in the world, which, is, which have uphold quality, to its absolute maximum. Think about a Sony for TVs. Think about a Dell for laptops. Think about Apple for its iPhones. They've kept the quality level really high. They charge a premium, but consumers are okay to pay that extra premium because of the longevity of which the product you know, gives at the end of the day. I've covered three of Ben Graham's strategies, which is financial leverage, quality ranking, and company's liquidity. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in part two of this series.